Hey guys, welcome to Rallycross GT. Today we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're doing um, a photo mode tutorial. So if you've been following us on Instagram, you'll see that we are hosting uh, photo contests. And many people have been asking for tips on how to take better photos, uh, how I take some of my shots as well. Um, even on racing or escapes mode. So I decided to create this tutorial here, share some of my um, the things I learned playing the game in GT Sports, in GT7, and help people take better photos as well. So before we start, a big disclaimer, I'm not a professional photographer. Uh, I've just been playing this game here for a while. Um, I have graduation in design, so I have some theory background but I'm not a professional photographer, so I'm not going to be using technical terms or anything. I'm just going to be talking about what the game shows, what the game offers, and just basic language. So, before you can take photos, you need to unlock here the escapes mode. Uh, you need to do some missions in the cafe to unlock that. Uh, I forgot exactly which level. I'm gonna try to check later and put in the comments uh, in the description. But you need to unlock the, the escapes mode in the cafe before you can take photos of your car. So after you unlock here the escapes, the game is gonna give you a quick tutorial on um, the basics of photography in the game, but it doesn't really tell you much about how to take photos. It just tells you about the features uh, the photography features that they've implemented in GT7. So, I will assume you've done that already. I can cover more in depth later in a different video, but today we're just going to cover basics of photography, just basics of escapes mode. We're not going to look at um, racing photography. So, let's get into the escapes mode. So before you start photographing, the first thing you need to do is think about what you want to photograph. Why are you photographing? Are you trying to show off your favorite car? Are you trying to create a, a dynamic scene like a chase scene? Or are you trying to show the background, the background that you like and your car happens to be there? You need to think exactly what you want to show. Uh, because if you don't think, first of all, it's hard to take the photo. And second, the photo is not going to look very good. It's going to look like something just happened. And photography, you need to plan it. It cannot just happen. Right? So, after you think about what you want to do, uh, we can choose a background. I'm going to show, I'm going to show you a few examples of photographies that I've taken. Uh, just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So going here to the showcase and my items, I'm just going to filter here. Um, escapes mode. So these are a few photos that I've taken. Uh, so here we have a Mercedes AMG. Uh, bright green color in a very bright background as well with backlight. It's quite a, a hard shot to take because of where the light's coming from and the car is quite dark. You need to do some adjustments. But key takeaway here is a contrast between the car and the background. Uh, you can see the green color with the white, it kind of jumps. You know, uh, so it's a, it's a nice shot. The car is right in the center of the photo. It's taking almost the whole frame, but you can see the mountain in the background as well with the sun rising or setting. It looks quite quite a powerful picture. Another one that I like, uh, very different picture here. This is a very dark picture. It's a Corvette C7 uh, ZR1. In a, in a petrol station. So this one has got a dark background with a lot of lights. So here we have a black car. 
And the cool thing about this is that the car can borrow a lot of the light uh, from, the, from the landscape. As you can see, it reflects in the top and it's quite dark here on the right hand side. Uh, I've, I've used some filters in this photo as well to make this um, the bottom right red like that. Again, I'm borrowing the light from the landscape and trying to tell a story here. This is a very dark and um, emotional uh, photograph. And the car is very close to the to the camera here so it's very zoomed in it takes a big part of the photo it's very like in your face as well so we are trying to show off the car here and not necessarily the background the same thing with the mercedes is trying to show off the car now a very different shot here we have a, uh, a nissan fair lady z in uh white silver color uh with a snow background and Mount Fuji in the back. Now, this shot is very different from the other two. This is, first of all, is a dynamic shot. The car is moving, you can see the blurred background. Also, the car is white, silver. Uh, it blends in with the, with the snow, but it doesn't just blend in. It looks like it belongs there. Uh, so, it kind of makes sense. You could use a different color, it would give a completely different effect if you just change the color of the car but this is something else that you need to think about the color and the background how they go and here the car is not the main focus of the the picture it's not zoomed in it's not taking the whole screen here it's balancing with the background it's telling a completely different story it's a much more dynamic picture and that's why it's from from afar and uh, just another other two pictures here so we're gonna be working with this background here during this tutorial so I'm just gonna show these two photos that I've taken uh, just before uh, just before recording this so it's the same background but I just want to show how the framing completely changes the, the mood of the picture of the background that you choose so here we have a Lexus uh, RCF uh, this is uh, with, a, with a, the painted hood and the painted roof it's in white on a dark on a gray background you have some reflection underneath as well it's got the lights on it looks like the car is coming there from the left from behind behind um, the pillars it tells it tell kind of tells a story here but this is very zoomed in as well it's a very aggressive um, picture now this is the same the same place uh, the only thing that changed here is the um, is a framing so the car has not moved the background has not moved I've just zoomed out so you can see that the reflection shows completely different, but now you have a lot more white space, empty space on the right hand side and above the car. It doesn't look like an aggressive uh, picture anymore because you have a lot more space. So this is another thing you need to think about. What type of photo are you trying to take? What do you want to show? What story you want to tell? Do you want the impact? the car showing the power and energy so then you're gonna zoom in have a very close shot or do you want a more calm background something a little bit more contrasting showing the car and in the background fitting in so then you zoom in a little bit more something like this or like the nissan that we showed before so think before you're taking the picture choose your car uh, according to the background uh, the car and the color most importantly you can have uh, you can have a blending contrast or you can have uh, a contrast of colors different colors as well back in escapes mode let's choose a background so I have added a couple of my favorite spots here to favorite spots it's a very good way to keep track of uh, places you like so this 
underground discharge channel that's where we took that picture with the Lexus so let's go into the same background as we had the Lexus um, we're gonna try a slightly different car this time um, not the Lexus something a little bit more colorful this time let's get this RX-8 here in bright red or orange kind of jumps uh, in this uh, gray background it's gonna look nice with the reflections as well so let's think about what type of shot we want to take I'm gonna try something similar to the Lexus here it's got the, the reflection the, wa the water reflection there which looks very nice uh, unfortunately cannot get the whole car in it let's put the car here right in the middle so you need to think what you want to show here so the car right in the middle is just sitting there in the middle of the background as if you just put it there it doesn't tell you much so if you this if this is a static picture it's not gonna look very good so we're gonna transform this into a panning shot as if the car is moving but not at 80 kilometers per hour because you don't think you can go at 80 in here so it's just strolling around we're gonna turn the wheel a little bit to give a bit more of a dynamic feeling it's dark in here so lights on and let's put the driver of course right and I want to have my own driver in there right uh, well we're gonna add a little bit of tire dirt just because we are in the um, in the underground and it might make sense it's quite dirty in there right so we've got the car right there in the center focus is very important so let's zoom in a little bit thing is here you zoom in you lose the reflection so you need to look at the framing again let's a little bit like this so we have enough of the car enough of the reflection but we still have enough space above the car we don't want to um, cut the reflection too much because if you cut the reflection completely then you are losing something that is uh, the charm of this this landscape here of this uh, this background but you don't want to leave too much on the back, uh, too much like this, otherwise the, the photo becomes a little bit, um, there's no story there. So, right, we've got our framing. Like this. So now, how to operate the camera here? Again, I'm not a professional photographer, so... I'm not going to be using technical terms, but aperture here, what does it do? What does aperture do? If you bring it down, low aperture, you can see the background, it will become blurry. If you open the aperture, you can see that, you can see that the background becomes more crisp. Also, it affects the light of the car. So the aperture is controlling how much of the the eye of the lenses will, will be open and that affects how much light can enter right so we're gonna leave a high aperture here uh, remember this is a moving picture the car is moving at 18 kilometers per hour so this is gonna capture a lot more light we're gonna see what happens when we take a picture with high aperture like this exposure as well is um, to do with the light if you increase the exposure, the photo is brighter. If you decrease the exposure, the photo becomes darker. I'm just gonna increase a tiny bit of exposure because I think this is a bit too dark. And then the shutter speed is how long the, the, the camera, the eye will be open for. So the longer it's open, the more light comes in. But because this is a moving picture, moving photo, the longer this is open for, uh, the harder it will be to, call, to to track the car properly. You get more of the blurry effect. So the longer it's open for, 
the more blurred effect you get and the the, the longest or the the shorter is open for you get more exactly what you're seeing right now so you put all to the right to get more crisp picture zero blur you put more to the left if you want a lot of blur uh, I'll let you guys experiment with this but let's stay here on the default of 1 slash 60 camera tracking rate this is how much the camera will be following the car as well so this is quite uh, important to to use on your moving picture so 90% it means that the camera is moving with the car at 90% uh, so it's f slightly slower than the car so we've got our framing we've got the focus here I want to focus here on this part of the car uh, depending on how close the car is the focus will change as well what you can see with the aperture so focus and aperture the two things that work together uh, very closely and well first of all before we do anything else let's um, let's take a few shots let's put the exposure back to zero you can hold here the pad to see what your photo looks like before you take it let's shoot so you can see the wheels moving a little bit there's quite a lot of glare there uh, from the lights uh, we have a nice crisp reflection the background is slightly blurry let's save this so that's the first shot let's increase a little bit of exposure that's the first thing we change just exposure let's shoot again it's the very same picture just with a little bit more exposure you can see the car is a little bit brighter now I will put both side by side in the video so you can see you can compare the darker side the brighter side now what else can we do so there's a lot of red here in this picture the car is red you can see that the, the concrete towers in the back they're also red it's a little bit too much for my like that's the first thing I want to change so here at the top you have temperature and color ca color cast correction I'm just gonna work on the temperature so light has got temperature and uh, it affects how you perceive the the colors if you go outside in a hot day in a cold day you will see that the light looks different so if we put to the right here the photo becomes warmer you see it becomes a lot more yellow uh, as if it's a very hot day but what I want I want less red so you can see the color bar there uh, if you put more to the left it becomes more blue so you see you see how the background changes so it was around here before something like that and now here it's a lot paler in the background so I like that uh, let's just zoom in quickly I like that it's a bit less aggressive and the car uh, highlights more like this uh, just one very important thing anything that you change here on the top will affect the whole photo further here on the bottom you have masks uh, you can for example separate just the background or uh, the masks here where the white part is what's going to be affected uh, so this whatever changes you make inside those uh, masks will only affect the selected area but when you change here temperature and uh, color it affects the whole picture right so first of all let's uh, let's get rid of a little bit of that glare it's too much glare so you see if you zero it the lights are still on but they don't glow as much you can also increase it but in this case a little bit too much there are cases where you might want a lot of glare to have a spe uh, specific uh, effect 
I think, yeah, minus 30 is good. I always like to hit the circle when I'm doing the changes, just to see the before and after. So a bit less glare. Let's put a mask in the background. So like I said, whatever I do here will only affect the background. See, the car remains as it was. I'm removing the saturation here. I have a black and white background and the car still red. So I want a little bit more saturation. Nah, we, we, we got rid of the saturation. If I change the temperature, I'm not going to put more. But I do want to put a little bit more contrast. You see, it makes the photo a little bit darker. A little bit darker. So then you can, it contrast, it blends in with the car a little bit more. So, contrast, highlights, they affect more the light of the car. Or if you have a, a night picture with a lot of uh, lights as well, the highlights will affect that. If we increase highlights here, it doesn't really make any difference because we only have natural light here. Blacks is something that we could work as well. Actually, yeah, by putting down one point. If you increase the blacks, you make everything whiter. If you decrease, everything darker. Usually, I just decrease by one point or two. Just one point here. You can see that, you can see that the shadows of the car on the bottom, they are a lot better now, a lot crispier. Quick zoom in. But now the car is a little bit too dark. So let's go work, work on the car now. So there is this last um, block here of filters that you can, you can apply. This is just to the car or the driver if you have a driver sitting outside. Let's put a little bit of brightness there. Let's see if we need brightness. No, the brightness is going to make yeah, a little bit. A little bit of brightness. And then one down on the blacks as well, just to make the tires and uh, the grills a little bit more defined. It looked a little bit washed out before. You don't need to put more contrast here. It's going to make the car too dark. We don't want that. You might want to do that. Sometimes it's cool, but not all the time. A little bit like this, perhaps. Five, five contrast is good. Highlights, like I mentioned, it affects sources of light. So if we increase this, you can see what happens there to the lamps of the car. So we've decreased glare because we don't want that, but if you don't want to remove it completely because then it becomes too pale. Um, and lifeless. We want a little bit of life there. So now let's let's shoot. So this is our third photo. Let's save this one as well. So now we have three photos of the same car in the same place. So the first one is literally point and shoot. The second one we've changed the exposure a little bit and this one we have uh, changed the temperature uh, to be a little bit cooler, which affects the, the background and the car. We have changed the background, added more contrast and uh, changed the blacks. And then we have treated the car and we've dialed, we put a little bit of brightness, a little bit of contrast and dialed down the black as well. So let us know in the comments which of the three photos you like the most uh well more importantly if you can tell the difference if it's a meaningful difference to you would you be happy just with the the point and shoot or do you think that going through all that work of uh changing the background and changing the car if it makes any difference to you now just before we finish playing with this one here Let's just change the aperture and see what difference it makes here. So 
Now we're gonna shoot with minimum aperture. We had maximum aperture here. We can see that the light of the car glows quite a lot. But now we're gonna decrease the aperture. Uh, it changes the light, but it also changes the um, reflection, the background. Uh, I don't want to blur it too much because you can see that the rear of the car is too blurry. I still want to get the whole car. So 4.0. And let's shoot again and see what happens. So again, let's see if you can tell the difference between the, the high aperture and the low aperture uh, and how that affects your, your photos. Right, and then uh, just to finalize, we were talking about how to frame the car. So here we framed super pretty taking into consideration the reflection in the bottom, the space above the car on the right hand side. But now let's, uh, let's zoom out. So this, I think this is the original picture. I think I'm zoomed out the most here. Yeah. Yeah, this is maximum zoom out. Uh, the focus here is still in the same place in the car. And let's shoot again. So we still have the low aperture, the 4.0 aperture. With the same settings that we had before. It looks like a nice picture still because of all the treatments that we've done. But uh, now you have a lot more space around you. It looks more calm. It looks more like there's more there's more space around. There's a bit more air. So these are just things that you need to take into consideration when you're taking a photo. Think before you shoot. Plan it. Choose a car. Take into consideration the background that you're going to be shooting. And yeah, I think that's it for takeaways. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear from you if you found this tutorial uh, useful. Uh, anything else you would like to see in the future from us as well. And um, if you found this useful, please do take photos as well. Uh, post them on Instagram and, uh, and tag us. Tag us so we can have a look. Uh, at rallycrossgt on Instagram or you can use our hashtag rxgt and um, yeah I would love to see what you guys can do with uh, these tips uh, I have a couple of more episodes planned but there's a lot more that we can do here just on scapes mode uh, I would love to see you guys again soon if you like this please uh, give it a like Consider subscribing to the channel, it uh, encourages us to do more of this. Thanks a lot for sticking around. Uh, my name's Kurt Dunninger, and in the name of Rallycross GT, thanks for watching.